teaching priest. In fact, let me tell you this. Let me, let me describe for you the jurisdiction of my commitment to you as far as the ministry of the word is concerned. Number one, my first assignment to you and over you by God is to create an atmosphere that sponsors supernatural encounters. Please do not forget this. My first assignment is not to teach the word. My first assignment is to labor with the spirit and ensure and insist that the atmosphere remains ever conducive for encounters. Encounters with the spirit of God because there are some things teachings can, will not do. It will take a direct encounter with the spirit of the living God. So the atmosphere of worship, the atmosphere of prayer, all of these is to be able to make the atmosphere, the spiritual climate conducive for encounters. Number two, enlightenment. My second assignment over you by God is to be able to grant us access to high level spiritual illumination. Please, I want you to listen carefully. Hallelujah. So that you comprehend the ways of God, you comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom. Because in your enlightenment is the manifestation of your authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit is light dependent. John 1 5 the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not that means for as long as you are in darkness there are some things that will not be possibilities in your life hallelujah the bible says in ephesians 4 18 that when we are in darkness and our minds are blind we are alienated from the life of god and that through the ignorance that is in our hearts so line upon line precept upon precept here a little there a little doctrine after doctrine truth after truth teaching after teaching i owe you by god and based on the covenant of my call and my service to see that as much as god grants grace it is delivered to you with accuracy exactitude and precision the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of God means that your growth will not be lopsided as a result of prejudices and biases that you will be holistically built. I will teach prosperity like there's no other topic to teach. I will teach character like there's no other topic to teach. I will teach the ministry of the spirit like there's no other topic to teach. I will teach on influence like there's no other topic to teach. I have no particular biases to any area of the of the kingdom life at all provided it is scriptural and it makes for the holistic development of the saints when i teach it i will teach it with passion that is the assignment of a teaching priest are we together so that in addition to your godliness in addition to character you are able to find a life of meaning and purpose to represent jesus holistically the third assignment that I have over you is the assignment of empowerment. In partnership with the Holy Spirit, I owe you to supply you by the Spirit all of the spiritual resources that make for your strengthening and your overall empowerment. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, it says your strength is small. Empowerment, spirit, soul, and body mental empowerment that comes by providing superior ideas spiritual empowerment building capacity that's why we took our time to pray and fast it doesn't have to be a special occasion or a special request it is part of the spiritual growth process of any serious believer hallelujah and then of course i owe you support any and all kinds of support to be able to guide your steps your walk with god to see to it that your christian experience is not without help and is not without support and finally i believe that i owe you purpose to be able to connect all your training and your dealings 
and to help you find your place in life and destiny let me tell you my assignment is not complete over you if the only thing you keep learning is just mystery after mystery with no point of application there must be a connection between what you are learning and where you should use it hallelujah purpose is what gives value to pursuit every time you seek his power you seek his face his glory to know his ways it is to an end there has to be purpose connected to this prosperity without purpose becomes a burden revelation without purpose becomes a burden and if i may add one more responsibility i owe you mastery and efficiency i owe it to you that you not only come into a comprehension of the truth but that you come to a point of mastery and efficiency he says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully hallelujah and for as long as god grants me strength you can be sure that i remain ever committed to seeing that these various dimensions are supplied for adequately hallelujah but you also owe yourself an assignment there is a participatory role that you have to play your first your first assignment is genuine connection and submission to learn your first assignment is not writing your first assignment is not receiving your first assignment is not shouting amen your first assignment is not falling your first assignment is not even testified your first assignment is a commitment from the depth of your heart that for the sake of the kingdom for the sake of my destiny for the sake of those connected to me for the sake of the mandate upon me to reveal jesus i submit myself to learning acts chapter 2 and verse 42 acts 2 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly with resilience with endurance that means that continuation was not convenient but it was a covenant they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers hallelujah so you owe it to submit yourself to learn number two you owe it to apply the truths that you learn you must obtain grace there is no teaching that happens here that we just wrap up by the last point we say okay with these few points of mine i hope that you now understand god bless you see you next week we always end every meeting with prayer and among the many things we seek to do is to obtain grace it says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them you need the engracing of the spirit because it is not by might nor by power the bible says it is by my spirit paul said i know what to do but to do it i do not have that ability he says with my spirit i serve the lord but in the flesh i see another law walking in my members he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death so you can know what to do but the engracing to do it may not be there hallelujah praise the name of the lord and may tonight be one of such nights where you get to learn the precepts of the spirit again with power and with wisdom you are equipped by the power of the holy spirit by the way let me ask you how many of you can truly testify that your life is changing i'm not talking of this church thing that you say just so that you don't annoy a man of god if if you are not changing listen the problem is not what you are hearing the problem is you that's why i'm confident enough i know the power of what is coming to you are we together if you are not changing there are many reasons one you are not born again possibly two you are not engaging the truths that you are learning or three you are not even connected sincerely you can come here like a football fan coming to watch um a, a spiritual match and you are happy entertain yourself coming to see faces and share the grace and go back 
or you can come here carnally minded desiring something else other than jesus let me tell you sincerely the recipe for frustration is that your eyes is in any other thing other than jesus i give you a guarantee sooner or later you will be frustrated the longevity factor in the house of god is as you stay gazing on jesus if you look for trouble you will find it if you look for inefficiency you will find it if you look for mundane carnal things it will distract you unfortunately so you must set your eyes on jesus lord i am here for you i am here for your presence i am here for an encounter hallelujah speak to us in the name of jesus christ help us oh god to rise and to stand strong i want you to pay attention to what you will learn tonight because i believe that this is a much needed revelation especially for the times that we live in i woke up a few i think a week or two ago and just to look through online papers and i saw that they were showing the picture of a little baby and it's purported that she's the eighth billion eight billionth baby on earth and it didn't excite me because you see i've read my bible and i interpret life from the lens of scripture go and read the bible and find out what happens every time men begin to multiply from the book of genesis every time men begin to multiply greed begins to multiply self-centeredness begins to multiply the fight for resource control begins to multiply are we together yes so with increase comes the burden of maintenance that means that there are things that if you do not know i i hate to be the bearer of bad news but based on intelligence and based on scripture we are about to see the greed of man stretch to borders we have never seen in modern history we are about to see people act like beasts in selfishness and wickedness like we have never seen that means people will easily fraternize with the realm of the spirit to if possible clear everybody out of the way and make sure they have access to this praise god i have a little beautiful aquarium and they put all kinds of fish all kinds of fishes there and one time i found out the tiniest of them just disappeared i didn't see them again and then i said something must be going on here i mean these guys have coexisted in peace what would have happened I found out that the larger the larger fishes will cluster around an area and seem to eat and then go back and i couldn't find the tiny the tiniest you know the very small ones again and i got sad and i said i hope it is not what i am thinking i hope because i travel <laughs> i traveled for a while so when i came back i didn't find two and i said what in the world is this for me it just gave me a very powerful i said how could this fish be living together in peace eating together celebrating together and just a few extra days beyond their normal schedule of food and you come back and you don't find the two smallest ones they are gone what was in the mind of the larger fish as they ate the smaller ones they said look i love you i you need to know that we are, we are together we're together in this and um it's not that i really want to destroy you but that is just what happens with increase now as funny as this sounds it is not a joke are we together yeah because that is exactly what happens the moment you have an increase in the population of men and then you have wars across territories that means there is limited resource are we together we have all kinds of things happening climatic conditions that are you know destroying productivity it is important for us to wake up otherwise we will be taken by surprise 
the extent of wickedness and greed that we see in our world right now just because you are born again and you love god make no mistakes about it not everybody is born again just because your conscience has not been seared with iron and you can